Good afternoon, church. Thank you for joining us this afternoon in service and online. We welcome you to First Baptist Church. I ask that you please stand with us as we sing our first hymn, We Bring the Sacrifice of Praise. of God today. And I think um, a wonderful, I sent a wonderful deacon Cassian and Aaron, so she's not here. So let me help you with the opening today. It's good to have you in church and God bless you all. Amen. We always invite those online and those in our, in our sanctuary into the presence of God. We bring our sacrifice into the house of God. Amen. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We declare his name. It's upon our confession of faith that we come in Christian fellowship. Our message will remind of the importance of acknowledging Christ daily, daily in our lives. Our postmodern world and culture is consumed with this material world that we are living in today. The pleasures of sin while ignoring the riches of the faith in Jesus Christ. And boy, do they ever need that today over in the Middle East. We'll pray about that later on. Do you know your worth based on your confession in Christ? 
Do you know how important that you are? How valuable you are when you confess Christ as your Lord and Savior? Hopefully today you'll get a chance to know what that means in our wonderful message. It is written in Romans 14 verse 11. It is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Of course, Philippians 2 echoes the same thing as well. Father, we invite your presence today. We thank you for our atmosphere of praise already. And we invoke and invite your spirit to come. Dwell among us, dwell with us. As we anticipate, Lord, learning of you today, as we lift up holy hands and give you praise for the God that you are. Bless those who will sing, those who will minister in song, those who will deliver the word. Bless our instruments and our musicians. And bless us together as a family of God as we come in fellowship to honor and worship you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's worship God together.
And I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave. As Pastor would say for this next song, clap your hands, stomp your feet, whatever you are able to move, move it in the name of the Lord.
Glory be to God. What a conqueror you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Amen. Welcome to our worship service uh, of today. Those online and those in the sanctuary. Uh, it's time for our responsive reading, which is titled Faith's Confession, uh, taken from the book of Matthew chapter 10. Romans 10. <laughs> Thank you. Romans chapter 10. I am going to be reading the text in white, and please join me to read the text in yellow. Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal, for they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. For Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all of its commands. But faith's way of getting right with God says, Don't say in your heart, Who will go up to heaven? to bring Christ down to earth. And don't say, who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again? In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that, that message, message is the very message about faith we, we, we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As, script, as the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in God will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Can we repeat the last part, please? For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Shalom, amen, and maranatha. This is the reading of the Lord, of Amen. the word of the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. And that was not coincidence. That's a very intentional reading. And that's the reading 2,000 years later of what you all are seeing on social media, all over the news happening in the Middle East. And if I was to just mention the two names, we'll have a divide and start a war in this church probably. Because some believe in Palestine and some believe in Israel. Some believe they're wrong, some believe they're right. And we forget the reality. It's all about God, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Jew and Gentile, Israelis and Palestinians, Ukrainians and Russians. Hello, somebody. If I check my dictionary, when God made us in his image, he made us equal and we're all humans. We care for each other and for all those who are being hurt. Terrorism, absolutely wrong. Get rid of them. Amen? But let innocent lives be spared. Let people live their lives in harmony as much as possible. That's my prayer today that we'll talk about later on. But welcome to First Baptist Church. Amen? We, we don't apologize for believing in Jesus. Amen? For they that declare that Jesus Christ is Lord shall be, shall be, shall be saved. Amen. And I am glad that I am saved. I don't know about anybody else. Are you saved? Because I'm saved. I am saved and been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And Jesus Christ is my Lord. I don't apologize. I'm sorry to offend you, but Jesus Christ is my Lord, my Savior, my soon coming King. Oh, I'm excited today. Amen. He is worthy of our praise. Let's just remind you who's here for the first time. 
Anyone here for the first time? Any visitors? I know they're still trying to get through the marathon. That's, a, that's probably what it is. Uh, but God bless you for you who are here today. Always a little concerned with the marathons and the protesting going on. How do we get to church? And we had to make a decision this morning. Do we go east, west, north, or south? But here we are. Uh, we're praising God together downtown Toronto. So God bless you. Those online, great to also have you in service with us all, all over the world. We say blessings on you. We say welcome to First Baptist Church. You are faithful to us as you always are. We want to say thank you for your giving. Thank you for helping sustain our ministry every day with your finances. It's how we prove our love for Jesus Christ as well in our faithfulness and giving to him. So thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. Raise your hands. Father, I declare a blessing even now. As faithful stewards, giving into your storehouse, whether online in sanctuary, whether it's far away or near, we thank you for the technological way that we can give now. And recognizing offerings is just a means of giving back to you as you promised to us that we should give into your storehouse. So I declare a blessing on those hands raised even now. Whether you're looking for a job, whether you're unable to pay your tithes, whether you're struggling with finances, whether the economy is just, just looming on you, I declare that you will be blessed of God by the promises of God that he said he will supply your needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. Look to the hills from when comes your help. Amen. Because your help comes from the Lord. Amen. I speak life. I speak blessing and I speak financial, not prosperity, but financial means to satisfy your needs in this world today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The blessing of God be upon you. Thank you through e-transfer. You can give through that, through email, through PayPal, through text to give. Arrange for a pickup or drop it off at the church. But thank you. God bless you in your faithfulness. All right. This coming Wednesday, uh, we continue on with our wonderful Bible study on the book of Proverbs. We prayed a lot last Wednesday because of the unrest that's happening in the Middle East. But we prayed for all the needs around us as well. We had a full list. And we'll try to remember what those are later on. But remember this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m. is our Bible study time online. We're so thankful. So, so many of you join us. Wow, from near and far. We want to say thank you for joining us for the book of Proverbs. And as well, our children also is online. They, they, they do their, their Sunday school online. And if you don't know, talk to our Sunday school superintendent. Elizabeth is, is also conducting online. Juliet is back there as well. Talk to one of our leaders. But we want you to, if, you were, if your child is in Sunday school downstairs on a Sunday, you should register them on a Wednesday night. It's a continuation. And I'm telling you, the kids who are online, they are having a blast. Take them off the social media. Take them off their phones for a while and maybe let them learn about Jesus at least one more time in the week. Is that good? Because Sunday school downstairs for half an hour is not enough for your child. If you're not teaching them yourself, it's not enough for your child to learn about God. So let them join other, other children and learn about this wonderful ministry we have. Sunday school online, all right? It's on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And please register them and get them online from 4 to 12 years of age. We hope that you can join them in that also. Baptism is coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Looking forward to having our church called Dialogue of Faith Church. They will be joining us for baptism. Uh, we've got, I think the clipboard is in the back, yes? Put your names down, put your phone numbers or your email down. I think we've got like seven candidates already. If you want to get baptized uh, this coming end of October the 29th, I'm looking forward to dunking you in the water, amen, okay? You've got two weeks to live right, all right? Depending on how much sin you have, I'll hold you in the water just as long, okay? So you want to be careful, all right? I'm only kidding. But be transformed and get to know Christ. He was baptized just as well. I want to encourage you to get baptized. So looking forward to it on the 29th. We have a class on the, on the 28th. So keep that in mind. If you're getting baptized, you need to be here uh, October the 28th at 9 a.m., all right? So look forward to having you. I'll have some snacks for you, and we'll have lunch together when you're wrapping it up at 1 p.m. So looking forward to seeing the 28th, and then our membership class is the following week, the two weeks after that, all right? Impact 60, um, it's, it's, it's more or less completed on Saturdays, but there is some, some discussions on Sundays after service. There'll be opportunities for our seniors to still continue learning about their emails and social platform and, and videoing and stuff on your iTablets. So we're looking at one in November. So we'll announce it to you very shortly, okay? In November, we'll have a, a Sunday for you, for you seniors who wants to be involved with Impact, okay? But I have good news for you. Uh, the second weekend in November, we're going to start our steel pan training. 
Uh, I think there's a clipboard back there as well, Denise. So if you want to be part of the Steel Pan Learning Training, all right, which was part of our Black Initiative Impact uh, last year, we're starting it up. At, we're not sure if it's going to be a Friday night or a Saturday yet. That's to be determined. But uh, keep it in mind, the second weekend in November, and I'll have more details next week for you. Uh, but there was a clipboard in the back. Put your names down, Pastor. It doesn't matter how old you are, all right? Pastor, I'm, I want to learn steel pan. I want to have some fun. And we'll put you through a, a training session with that, okay? And by the way, then we're going to have a concert on the steel pan, steel pan concert, okay? Yeah. Okay, so looking, I, I want to be a part of it too, by the way. I want to. I want to learn myself, all right? So looking forward to that, okay? And don't forget, uh, the first uh, Friday, November the 3rd, we're going to, um, to the church on the Queensway for to see and listen to the Brooklyn Tabernacle Singers. Uh, looking forward to that wonderful concert series uh, that night. So join me. I know a number of you are you coming. I am debating on having a bus take us there, but I'll let you know about that later on, okay? Since there were so many hands I saw raised up, it might be good for those of you who don't drive and want to get there is quite far away so we might get a bus a school bus just to pick us up and take us there okay we'll let you know about that by next week all right so god bless you i think that's all am i missing anything leaders we good we good well we got some birthdays to celebrate today and one is very special uh birthday today on the 15th oh wait me I, I was pointing at his brother because he's on the base sometimes it's away me's birthday today on the 15th happy birthday sir We'll see if we can uh, get you a cake or something later on, all right? So Macario is a sister Anna, our usher lead, our grandson. Uh, Macario is on the 16th. Uh, Brittany Hossein, uh, Linda's granddaughter, is on the 18th. Caroline Ma is on the 18th. I don't think she's here. A wonderful uh, uh, Chinese friend. And Joshua Higwe is on the 21st. I don't think Josh is here as well. But that's our birthdays today. Did I miss a birthday? Anyone else celebrating a birthday this week? No, 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 no. All right, then we have an anniversary. Uh, not here, but Shermaine and Jason. Oh, I didn't see you. I didn't see you sneak in. Happy anniversary. We were there. We married you a number of years ago. So on the 19th, holding strong. God bless you. All right, all right, we good. Any more anniversaries, birthdays, we good? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday and anniversary. <laughs> I love when we have an anniversary because then we get to create our own song, right? You know. Uh, that's awesome. Wonderful. Congratulations and God bless you all today. Amen and always. All right. Let's continue on. And um, I think we're going to go to prayer first. And then we're going to have our song, our prayer, our specials. Wonderful. Ali is going to sing for us today. That's awesome. She's going to minister in song. But let's go to prayer. Uh, come and, and lead us, youth. Come again, lead us. Amen. of October is Pastor Appreciation. <coughs> and today we would just like to take a moment to say thank you, Pastor Gibbs. Could our leaders, members, elders please stand as we say thank you. Um, we were at the day apart yesterday and um, Pastor Sam couldn't stop talking about Pastor Gibbs and how what a man he is, and he's a man of God, that's first of all. We know of all his qualifications, but the most important thing about him is he's a child of God. And one of the, a couple of the things Pastor Sam said, he says he's one of the most influential leaders in our nation right now. He said he sees Jesus in Pastor Gibbs, and he is right now fulfilling his destiny. So we want to say thank you, Sister Roselle, for lending him to us. And I just want to read something that Charles Stanley wrote in his, um, he says, anything no noteworthy that we become, it's because God wills it. 
There's nothing in us that will want us to help anyone out. But God wills it. It says we have no goodness apart from God's goodness imparted to us. And we see that in Pastor Gibbs, we want to say thank you. Like if there's a clogged toilet, he doesn't think he's above that. He will go and plunge it. And he's running here, there, and everywhere. So we want to say we appreciate you. We thank you. And we've been going through the book of Proverbs, and he's, we're deciding what's a fool and who is foolish and who is wise. So all those who do not know God, you're foolish. And if you know him, give him praise, you're wise. Okay, so if you know the Lord, you claim him, you are wise. And a verse that we didn't quite cover, but I saw it and I thought, this, this is him. It's Psalms 20, uh, Proverbs 23, 22, verse 29. It says, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings, and he will not stand before unknown men. So we see it happening, and pastors, Pastor uh, Sam was talking about like the chief of police just showing up to our barbecue. So we're on a journey, and because of this man, doors are opening for us. So let us not be afraid to step through them. And by the grace of God, we will accomplish what God has ordained. So today, PG, we say thank you, and we say God bless you. so much thank you so much and um, he prays for us all so minister Kevin will take a moment to give thanks and praise to God for Pat and sister Rose I'll come because behind every great man there's a greater woman so God bless you <laughs> I'm uh, I'm gonna relinquish my position here and ask pastor Lincoln to come and pray and anoint our pastor and his wife, the First Lady Roselle. This is a great moment right here. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, you are so great. You are so great in that you've have allowed your son, even before time was, to be prepared to pay a sacrifice so that you can bring into your kingdom, your family, your inner circle, the lives of these two individuals, among many others, that will come into this agreement, come into this understanding, come into this faith, Come into this lifestyle. Come into the, this kingdom. I thank you right now for Pastor Wendell Gibbs. And, oh God, his lovely wife, Sister Roselle Gibbs, oh God. Lord God, under his mantle that you placed him under, she falls under the, the lineage of pastorship, oh God. And we're thankful for that. We're thankful that you have allowed them to come before your people here at First Baptist, oh God. One of the more historic, oh God, churches of worship and praise and the power of God to be established in this country. You've brought them here for such a time as this so that your purpose and your mission will be fulfilled, that we will come to know you in a greater manner. I'm asking you right now that you will touch them. Oh God, your anointing will be refreshed in their lives, oh God. In the name of Jesus, as we lay our hands upon them, oh God. No weapon formed against them will prosper. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I ask as even they lay on their beds, revelation, oh God, will come. Understanding power of the enemy. I'm praying that miracle signs and wonders that you had for those simple unlearned men. These apostles, these disciples will rest upon them. 
as Joel declared, oh God, our sons and our daughters will prophesy. I pray in the name of Jesus that from this moment forward, there'll be a greater surge of your power, a greater surge of your understanding. And Lord God, that your relationship will even be stronger, oh God. That their love, oh God, that they have been given to them for each other by you, oh God, will be, oh God, an example to many lives, oh God. And their family, oh God, will follow in the same lineage that you have called them to. I thank you, Lord God, this day for Pastor Gibbs. I thank you again for Pastor Roselle. I pray, Lord God, that you will bless them. Mm. You will bless them. Mm. <laughs> no cursing will work. You will bless them. Oh God, we in the name of Jesus, Satan, I know your game plan, but already I'm going to write you off as a loser. You ain't going to win this one. Mm -mm, it's not going to happen. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord God, your will, your purpose be done. We give you praise and glory. And everyone will say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all. God bless you. Humbled to be a servant. Um, it is now our prayer time. Please stand for our prayer song.
this altar today.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What time is it? I think it's time for Sunday school to dismiss. Sunday school, you're free to dismiss. Father, bless these children. Bless their minds to receive the word, to know about you, Almighty God, their creator. Bless our teachers that they'll have the wisdom and the understanding to impart. But Lord, let you be the teacher. You be the guide. And you direct the paths we pray through our Sunday school and our wonderful children. Bless them, I pray, not just today, but tomorrow and throughout the week in schools, from bullying, Lord, from, from warped teaching, confusing their minds. I pray, Lord, that you will guard and safeguard our children in the name of Jesus. That when we send them out, you'll bring them back safely from all harm and danger. And no illness will befall them, Almighty God. We speak and we declare it now into every home, every family, upon every child. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we agree together and we say, amen. amen and amen. Go in God's grace, children. We love you. God bless you all, all right? Oh, I'm, I'm just feeling a sense of anointing in this place. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? There's so much needs around us, but yet we can walk in faith with God. Aliyah, come and sing for us. Hallelujah. This is our, this is our little Aliyah. Who is now our giant Aliyah? <laughs> The blood that Jesus shed for me Way back on Calvary The blood that gives me strength
Amen. It will never, never, come on, help me somebody, never, never, never lose its power. Amen. I don't know, y'all, just give me one big loving appreciation. I just feel like sitting down and just chatting with y'all. Is that all right? Guys, come on down. I want y'all in the front. Bring me my stool here and, and let's just chat for a bit. Amen. Isn't it great, except for these two old guys over here, Pastor Lincoln and Conroy. <laughs> Everybody else on the stage is below 30 years of age. Am I right, Steve? David, how old are you? 21? 28. So yeah, they're all under 30. So ex 23? 23. Wow. So except for these two old guys over here, I mean, isn't that great? We have all these, this generation leading worship and, and, and praising God with us. Isn't that awesome? What, what, what an exciting thing it is. Amen. I really think it is. I think, I think we have to adjust ourselves to recognizing, we have to adjust ourselves to recognizing that this is the now generation. And we got to really give them opportunity because the church always making excuses. But it's time we give them opportunities that they can worship, they can serve God. And, you know, and they will learn as they go. My, they will learn as they go. They'll mature as they go. I really believe that. But I have a, a, a little quick word for you today because I want to talk about your confession of faith. How many of you know what a confession of faith is? How many even confess any, any kind of faith? <laughs> we all are always confessing something, right? Uh, but, but I wanted to pray, but maybe I'll pray at the very end because obviously there is a major, major issue in our world today. And we can't deny it, right? And depending on what I see on the lens and camera, okay, I could be held hostage for that, okay? Because my opinion could actually offend people. So what I want to do is give you a biblical opinion, which is not going to offend anybody, okay? It's only Christians who understand the context of what's happening can relate to eat both sides. Jesus never picked sides, did he? Did he pick sides? If he picked sides, you and I wouldn't be here. I mean, look at the wretched sinner some of you guys are. Well, okay, let me talk about myself then. <laughs> Who wants to be honest that we don't deserve God's grace? We don't deserve God's love. We don't deserve God's forgiveness, right? right? But what does the world do? You do me wrong, I'm going to do you wrong back. An eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. What did Jesus say? Love your very enemies. And we seem to miss that point because everybody thinks that everybody who's talking on social media, on the news, everybody thinks they're all Christians. They are not Christians. They are not followers of Christ. And I'll make a declaration right now. Israel is not a Christian nation. Palestine is not a Christian nation. Russia is not a Christian nation. Ukraine is not a Christian nation. Afghanistan is not a Christian nation. America is not a Christian nation. Canada is not a Christian nation. Should I continue? Am I going to get in trouble or not? Only they that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be. You just read it in Romans chapter 10. And yet the world is competing and judging each other and killing each other because they are not Jesus. They don't understand the loving, gracious, loving Jesus who forgives us no matter who we are. And it's Jesus who still loves Ukraine and Russia. It's Jesus who still loves Israel and Palestine. It's Jesus who still loves Afghanistan and Iran. It's Jesus who still loves America and Canada. But guess who he loves? It's not the nation. He loves the people. And they that all dwell in it. That's who Jesus loves. He doesn't love terrorists, but he will still forgive them. If they call upon the name Jesus Christ, right, they will be saved just as well, right? So for innocent lives who have been murdered and killed and everything else, let's just pray for the peace of the Middle East. I know Psalms 124, I think it is, that says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But let's expand that, okay? Because that's, that's some uh, 4,000 years ago. But if I was to repeat today, he would say pray for the peace of the world. I'm not going to pick sides. I'm for everybody. I'm for the innocent and the babies and the genocide and the mutilation and the hate. I'm against all of that. And how dare we, how dare we sit in our comfortable zones and don't cry and feel sad that innocent lives have been lost because some perpetrator, some president, some prime minister 
wants to lie to us. I say this, listen, can you guys help me? Can we build a nice big boxing ring and give, give, give Putin and, and Sharon and all these prime ministers and give Biden and all, give them all a boxing glove? Put them in a big boxing ring and tell them go at it, right? Last man standing. Just leave us alone. Leave our citizenship alone. Leave our countries alone. Leave our nations alone. Leave our people alone. Leave our innocent lives alone. You guys go in a boxing ring and go ahead and kill each other. Isn't that true? Well, Father, we just pray. We know that this whole issue is about your word that will come to pass. You are setting the stage, Jesus, to come back to a people who will recognize that you are the Messiah. You are the risen Savior. Lord, Israel is still looking for that Messiah. Palestine is still trying to figure out, Lord, if, if Ishmael is really a descendant of God that you promised, you'll make them a great nation as well. So we got Islam, we got Buddhists, we got all these religions who's trying to figure out this gospel story. And we've got it, Lord. May we live the life and model it because, Jesus, you need to show up to show the world that every knee will bow in Israel, in Palestine, in Ukraine, in Russia, in Iran, in Afghanistan, in America, in Canada. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. I pray for the peace across the world for our presidents and our leaders to know they too will bow one day, O oh God, against all the innuations of trying to portray to oh God deception and corruption and lies upon us. Shut us off from social media. Shut us off from all this rhetoric of nonsense and people's opinions, O oh God, and help us to open the word of God and to read what you are declaring in the book of Revelations, through the Thessalonians, in the book of Matthew. In Timothy, O oh God, these are the last days we should look up for our redemption draws nigh. May we not follow a secular world's opinion, O oh God. Because if we do, we'll start to pick sides. You aren't picking sides because you're looking down on your creation and you're seeing humanity. And we pray for humanity today. For the mom whose baby has been lost, taken from her. For the father whose wife has been slashed in, in, in two for the people in the bombshells who have been blown up to pieces, and for the families who are crying and destitute, Lord, not just in Israel, but in Palestine. Not just in Palestine, but in Ukraine. Not just in Ukraine, but in Russia, oh God. Not just in Russia, but women can't even wear their, 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 their show their hair in, Af in, in Afghanistan, Lord. All this hate and evil against humanity, God have mercy, we pray, as your people of God, Father. May we feel the sensitivity of caring with compassion for all of humanity who's been lost, Lord. And let Jesus come. Let him come and bring life and reality to this conversation to our prime ministers and our presidents and those who are in leadership. You ask us to pray for those in authority. But Lord, we see sometimes praying for them is not even an answer because they're doing so much wrong decisions making such bad choices, oh God, against your citizens, Lord. But we just pray for the peace across the world, the peace in the Middle East, Lord. And we pray for a sense of understanding that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. War does not bring peace. Hate does not bring peace. Differences do not bring peace. Money don't bring peace. Only you, Almighty God, through your son Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, he one day, the Prince of Peace, is going to bring peace and order back to your creation. So help us in our resolve to think wisely, to avoid the rhetoric that's out there, and to speak life and compassion to all those who are in arm's way of man's wars and evil. We ask for your mercy and your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And Father, we pray for our city and for all cities who is locked down in a way of protection, anticipating that we may be affected in some way against the hate. We see the protesting on one hand and the other hand. Father, may we have the wisdom, O oh God, to embrace your grace in the midst of uncertainty in this of our nation. We ask for peace to reign even in our own city, in our nation and across the world, in our own families' lives, wherever they are. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I pray a blessing on you. We've had lots of people who's lost loved ones. Um, Coley's of uh, Myra lost a niece, and who lost uh, and her uncle. Uh, Sister Rosemary lost her brother uh, two days ago, I think it is. Uh,
Sister Rosemary, I know you're watching us. We say comfort to you and your family. Um, we've had some others in hospitals. Um, I know that uh, Marion is back home. Is she back home? Sister Marion, much sure back in Mississauga. We're praying for you, Marion. She watches us as well. We're praying for you. Um, Sister Lorna, we haven't seen her for a couple of weeks. Praying for her as well in the wheelchair. Diana is not here today. She was, she was there with us a couple of Sundays. Who else am I talking, missing out on? Who else? Pastor Lincoln. Uh, maybe you give your own testimony. I don't know, but Pastor Lincoln, we prayed for him this week, all right? <laughs> had a bit of a bout and um, had to get looked after, but he's here in the land of the living. <laughs> Amen. And his beautiful wife. I, I think that's why she's so, looking so pretty in orange today. She's saying, my man is back. He's here. Amen. God is good. Amen. Uh, what else? Who else am I missing out on? Oh, Kimberly Bundy. Yeah, Kimberly Bundy. You hear Kim, right? But Kimberly Bundy, she had a bout last weekend. I wanted to come to church. Ended up in the hospital, but she's fine. Just a bit of an asthma. Right, Kim? But, uh, but God is good. Amen. And, and so it continues, all right? We haven't seen the Elder Glory for a while, but Elder Glory, we want to recognize you too because you're an elder. We love you. And when you're not here, we miss you. We miss you terribly, all right? And Natasha, I see you waving. Me. Yeah, Natasha is here. Natasha missed a couple of Sundays uh, on the phone chatting with her. She will tell you she's got long COVID. Well, I pray she, that she gets short COVID. And anybody with me? And no COVID. Oh, oh my, my deacon chair said no COVID in the name of Jesus, amen? So we're going to keep trusting and believing God for you as well. And for all of you who are here, we can't identify all of you, but every one of us is important to God. Every one of us has got a story to tell. And you would have had struggles through this week like everybody else, like myself. But God is faithful. Right. Amen? And he's faithful collectively, but he's faithful individually. He wants to be faithful to you as you are faithful to him. Amen? And I pray the blessing upon you as well. So I want to talk about your confession of faith. Not so much about if you confess in, in terms of your forgiveness of sins, but your confession of faith or your declaration of who you are in God. All right? And uh, there's a couple of passages. The, the theme verse, as you saw, is Romans chapters uh, 14, verse 11. I'm just pulling the verse out, out of context because the context is really talking about don't judge people and how they eat and, and, and so on. But that's, that's your, that I want to take the verse out and just let you know. Like Philippians chapters 2, verse 11, the word confess is very, it says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Now, the confess there is not the confess where you ask God to forgive you of your sins so you can live an eternal life with him. This confess is, is beyond that. It's your declaration of who, of who God is in Christ. And then I want to read you Philippians chapter 2. Let me just read you the, the, the last part. You all know verse 5 says, Let his mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who thought it no rubbish to be equal with God, but took him from him as a humble servant. And so on. Let me read the last verse. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth. You mean angels have knees? You mean the four beasts has knees? Well, whether you have knees or no knees, you're going to bow somehow. Amen? What it's basically saying is this. The supreme God, who is ultimately the sovereign God over everything, every human living specimen, bees, uh, angels, ants, big lions, roaring ones, it doesn't matter. Everyone is submissive to God Almighty. He is the creator. Are you hearing me? The trees will bow before him, the Psalms tells me. Come on, come on out. Amen. Every mosquito, every tiger, every lion, every alligator, every human being, every prime minister, no matter how rich you are or how poor you are, it doesn't matter how black you might be or how white. I don't care how big your lips are. Every knee. Wow. Not just on earth. So it's beyond us. It's all of creation that will bow before the Lord. I think it's amazing when you think about it, right? But I want to go to the word here. It says, but, and those of earth and heaven. But it says, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. The world is on rest. They need to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. So let's talk about this word confess. Confession of faith is our theme for us today, is our theme for today, okay? And the confession is this. We are called to not just establish, but to live our confession of faith. It's one thing to say you got a confession of faith, but I want to ask you a question. Are you living it? Are you proving it every day in your life, no matter what circumstance you're going through? If even a bomb is coming at you, are you still confessing your faith? 
Or do you curse and say, I reject or I deny that Jesus Christ can save me or he's the son of God? Because that's what the world is doing right now. Imagine we're in a world of unrest. Imagine there's a war be before us and nobody's asking for any spiritual guidance or direction. Nobody's asking for a pastor or an imam or a priest. I don't care, a Buddhist, it doesn't matter. Ask for some spiritual direction. Hey, what should we do? How should we react? What is God saying about this? No, it's all about humanity and our own nation, our own little world that we think we have control of. And I was asking myself this week, I said, wait a second. You know, except for Genesis chapter 11, how come we think we own these nations? Who drew a line and said, this is my land? The nerve of humans. That's why Christ is going to come back and say, this is my land. This is my earth. This is my creation. I don't know how we got to this point where Canada has a line, this belongs to me and that belongs to you. And if, you, if, you, if you're in a boat in, in, in Niagara Falls, if you're fishing on this side, that's our fish. And if you're fishing on this, I, I don't get it. I don't get how we got to this point over the centuries, how we got to this point where Canada is my land, America is your land. You know, I mean, I, mean, I own Trinidad. That's a different story altogether, okay? You know, that, that's a different story altogether, okay? Anyways, let's continue on. I haven't even gone to my slides yet. Let's, let's continue real quick, okay? I may have to continue on maybe uh, the following week, but let me tell you this right now. We are called not just to establish, but to live out a confession of faith. Our confession is defined as a lived-out declaration that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. When you walk the street, you are declaring who you are. Your identity should matter who you are in Christ. So when you walk the public arena, people should identify that there's something unique about this person. He is a child of God. She's a child of God. Are you hearing me right now? They shouldn't be seeing the whole hum drum that they're seeing in the public arena because when you look at people right now, they're distressed. They're beaten up. They're tired. They're worried. Their face looks gloomy. Christians, when you walk the subway, how does your face look? You know, Pastor Sam was bragging me up yesterday, and all I want to do is plunge some toilets. That's all I want to do is plunge some toilets. <laughs> because we think we're all that as pastors and priests and apostles and prophets and stuff. And when I checked it out, Jesus was washing people's feet. And he's the savior of the world. If I can't plunge toilet in this church, I shouldn't be allowed to lay hands on you and pray for you. Are you hearing me? But that's, but that's the man-made church that we have structured in this hierarchy structure where we think that we humans are somebody better than or more important than. And we miss the point of this confession of faith. Let me continue on because it says Jesus Christ is Lord by which we bind ourselves in loyalty to Jesus. The Greek word for confession, then let's go to the Greek word. The Greek word for confess is what? Homo logioko. Homologio. Say it with me. No, there's different expressions of it, but the main word is homo homologio. Homologio. Okay? It's a verb to confess, but it also means to profess. So confess is like profess. So, for example, you will see the word profess in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed on into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession which you could put the word, hold on to your confession. All right, I see we're having a problem with our slides, uh, but that's, let's continue on. So the word conf conf confess, right, from Romans 14.11 and Philippians 2.10, you will see the word homolego. It means the same thing as another of agreement with. So when we confess declaration to God, we are saying we are aligning ourselves with Jesus and we are agreeing with who he is that God has sent. You are in agreement with him. When you confess, now, in the secular world, when you confess in a court of law, it's because you're confessing to a crime. You've done something wrong. There's some kind of punishment that takes place. Isn't that true? Right? And when you do that, they will, they will sentence you based on what your confession is, that I murdered the person, or I stole from the bank, or I did something wrong. That's not the confession I'm talking about. I'm talking about a biblical confession that in your confession of Jesus Christ, you are aligning yourself with him. And guess what? Therefore, your sentence, your sentence is free. Now, did you get that? You're no longer sentenced to death. 
when you come in agreement with the declaration of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord, you align yourself in agreement, your sentence is now being set free by the blood of Jesus. Somebody say amen. So therefore then, okay, Romans 10, 9 and 10 is the same word there. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be, you, we, we just read it earlier on, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. People need to know your confession of faith. Does your family know that you're a born again Christian? Does your friends know you're a born again Christian? Does your co-workers know you're born again Christian? Does your boss know you're born again Christian? I was in sales a long time ago. And I go to companies, Nortel and IBM and these companies and see engineers and discuss stuff and we'll go for lunch every once in a while. I had an expense allowance. So I'll take him for lunch, okay? I took a manager for lunch once, okay? A purchasing manager. And when I go for lunch, back in those days, I'll say, can we, can we, can we bless the meal? Well, you are, you are, you're making a big assumption. Because the person could be an atheist, they could be a Muslim, they're not necessarily a Christian, but here I am telling them, based on company's time, and I'm, I'm, I'm using their money to pay for the lunch, I'm imposing my Christianity on them. I thought it was fine, no problem, but my boss pulled me in the next day because one of the managers called and complained about me. He doesn't want this salesman praying in front of him anymore. So I had to confess my faith a different way by just showing Jesus in my life and respect the protocol. But our declaration should always be that people should know if even they're offended, they should still know who you are. Amen? And that's very important for us today. So let's continue on, okay? Because I want to give you, I want to give you just three points because uh, time is running out. Allow me to emphasize that confessing or confession is a vital step in receiving the promised eternal life through Jesus Christ. If you don't believe in Christ, there's no eternal life. Simple, right? But that's a declaration of your, that's a confession declaring that Christ is your Savior. So many people fail to give their Christ his rightful place and they deny his validity. In other words, they believe that Christ existed because you can't deny that. They believe he, he died a cruel death. You can't deny that. The problem is, is that not everybody believes that he's the Savior of the world. 99% of Israel, are you hearing me? Jews for Jesus, who's been here more than once, they might come for Christmas. They will tell you only 1% of Israel is born again Christians. You get the point yet. You see why we can justify retaliation and murder and killing. All right? Now, if 99% are not Christian, you can see that they don't believe that Christ is the Messiah. You can't have a declaration that he's the Messiah if you don't believe him and agree with him and align yourself with him. So let me give you three points about Christianity. So your Christian faith, I want to give you three points. Now, Max Ludo makes a very powerful statement. Max Ludo, the, the wonderful writer, he says, the only contribution, the only contribution you make to your righteousness is your own confession and admission of sin. In your alignment to Jesus, you are doing what? You are submitting yourself that I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm a sinner in the world, born in this world, but when I come into agreement with Christ, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Declaring what? Declaring that Christ Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, setting me free. So there's three C's I want to give to you, and I'm stealing this message, by the way, just these points from a wonderful pastor from Montreal. His name, I want to give, I want to give acclimated, his name is Mike Mazalongo, Mike Magalonzo, the reverend. He is a preacher, teacher from Montreal in 1979, and he's now a pastor in Koto Church in, in Oklahoma. So I'm giving you that much because I got these three C's from him. The three C's of Christianity is very simple, okay? The first one is Christ, and I can go a lot more, and I'll probably pick up it next week. But Christ is the end all and the be all of our, of our salvation. Are you hearing me? There's nobody else to believe in. There's nobody else to accept. You agree. No, that's only, that's only, though, an agreement based on one-third, well, I would say two-thirds of the world's population. We haven't convinced the other one-third of the world's population that Christ really is the end-all and the be-all because there are other good, good prophets. There are other good people, right? And there are others who are trying to make a name for themselves and becoming antichrist. 
but Jesus Christ in our story here. And it's Jesus Christ who in Simon Peter in Matthew 16, when he was challenging them at Caesarea Philippi, way up north in Israel. Okay, if you look at the map, you'll see that Caesarea Philippi, way up there, is close to, to Lebanon. And Lebanon, remember that Damascus was bombed just this week as well, by the way. That's where the airport is, okay? Serious stuff going on. And pay attention, okay? Because Syria is a very much a part of the biblical story as well. And Syria is just to the east of Lebanon. And Lebanon borders on the, on, on the border of Israel. And, and Caesarea Philippi is where satanic worship took place in the, old, in, in the, in the good old days. And Jesus goes up there and, he, and he's asking them, whom do people say I am? Because he, the gospel was coming now because Christ came to declare his confession to people. And Simon Peter, okay, many said, well, you might be Elijah, you might be, you know, you, you might be Moses, you might be this, you might be that. He says, wonderful, wonderful. And you know the story, right? What did Simon Peter declare? You are the Christ. You are the Christ. Not a Christ. Not some Christ. You are the one who the prophets spoke about all over the Old Testament. Everywhere from Genesis, the prophetic word in, in Genesis 3, I think it's 3.15, where it's the seed of the woman, the prophetic word that Christ will come long before Israel had to go through what they did. And it's through the people of Israel that God chose them as a people to bring the lineage where Christ will become the Savior of the world. And the very same people that God chose, they rejected him. Not true. But this Christ is very important to us. Let me continue on. Christ, right, is important because how God created the world was even through Christ. He was there in the beginning. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Verse 14, and the Word became flesh. Boom, boom, boom. In the beginning, in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, Jesus was there with the Holy Spirit and with God. And the creation story continues because Christ is the end all and the core subject matter of the Bible. Much of the Old Testament is devoted to showing how God created and nurtured a special people of the nation of, of Israel. But why? So that this seed can come out of them. This seed end up being the storyline of the whole 66 books of the Bible. Somebody say amen. So those who believe that he is the divine Messiah, they shall be what? Called the sons and daughters of God. Okay? The next point is this. Is Christ C? Christ's next C is what? What do you think it is? It's the cross. The second one is the cross. The cross is very significant. That's why we have a cross. That's why we talk about the cross. The first three centuries, we didn't talk about the cross because the cross was an offense to those who believed in Jesus the first three centuries. Why not? If they hung Christ on a cross when you were around, you wouldn't want to see a cross anymore. Isn't that true? If they hung my Savior on a cross, I would not want to see a cross after that. Of course, 2,000 years later, you all are wearing a cross on your neck. You, you know, you're, you're tattooing a cross on your body. We have a cross all over the steeples and the cross of the church because we get to recognize the importance of it. The first three centuries, they didn't see it, but now we see because Paul wrote about it in the book of Acts. In fact, 1 Corinthians 1, 18 says, for the, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. What's the power of God? The cross. Not the cross itself, the wooden cross, but what it represents. The cross represents what? Forgiveness. Deliverance, healing, mercy, grace, eternal life. It rep all of that for all of us. That's what the cross represents. Somebody say amen. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the cross. Mark 8.34 says what? Do you just do what? Take up your cross. Take up your cross and follow him. It represents what? If you take up your cross in that suffering experience, it represents forgiveness, deliverance, healing, all those things in your own life is what that cross represents. Somebody say amen. And I got more here for you with this cross business as well because the cross, right? Uh, this is why Jesus said in, in, in Matthew 16, 21, the cross is the main topic of the apostles preaching in Acts chapters 2. You'll see it there as well. Therefore, let the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This 99% of Jews who denies Jesus Guess what they did? They hung him on a cross. But by putting him on a cross, he became the savior of the world. Somebody say amen. This Christ, see, and this cross is the foundation of our Christian faith in declaring that he is Lord. 
more to share with you, but the cross allows us to wipe away our sins and pay it in full because of the cross. Amen? And the last one is the church. We are the church is the ecclesia. We are the church. Matthew 18, 18. You read on and, P and Jesus says, Peter, this confession that you made that I am the Christ, he says, I will build my church, the ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail. How many of you think that church is important? Well, some people don't think so. A lot of people tell me, you know, Pastor, I, I watch you know, my, my pastors, I watch you and the others on my social platform, you who are online. People don't think they have to go to church. Let me ask you a question, okay? What is, who is the church? Who is the church? Okay, now, what, what, what are we called in the scriptures as the church? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. Okay, well, that's Ephesians 5 and, and verse 21. We are the bride of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 talks about it as well, okay? We are the body of Christ. Isn't that true? We are the body of Christ. Now, let me, I think I have the verse here for you for the body of Christ somewhere in here. Okay, the Bible teaches that, that there is only one entity that is officially recognized by God and Christ as his body. Ephesians 4 verse 4. There is one body, one spirit, just as also you were called into one hope of your calling. So there's one body, right? So how many of you have a body? How many of you have a head? Can one live without the other? Oh, am I getting somewhere? Now, most people think we don't have to come to church. Well, of course you don't have to come to a local assembly building like this. But you better believe, you better be in fellowship with the body of Christ. And you can't be in fellowship by yourself. Now, if you're in line, say, ouch. Get your body to church. Did God make Jesus the head? Did he say that his followers will be his body? Could anything else be under his head? Is animals the body? Hmm? Is fish the body? Is birds the body? Answer me a question. When you watch animals together, when you go to the zoo or you go to the forest, do you see them by yourself or do you see them in packs? Oh my God, help me, Jesus. I hope you're getting this message. You are not a silos. You can't be a body all by yourself. Can my hand decide when I'm getting up in the morning? You know, Wendell, I'm not feeling good today. You go ahead without me and my hand is on the bed. Is that possible? You, you, are you getting this? We need to be in fellowship. We need to gather together. Hebrews makes it very clear. Do not forsake to assemble yourselves. Why? Because we are the body of Christ. And if, Christ is the, and if we are the body of Christ and he's the head, then the head needs to make sure there is functionality because the head can't move unless the body comes with him. I hope that makes sense. I hope somebody can say amen. Because that's why Christ the cross and the church is our Christianity. Don't deny that Jesus Christ is the end all and the be all of the scriptures. In fact, go to, the, go to the last slide for me. Let's wrap it up. It's coming. There it is. Number one, Christ, the divine Savior and Lord. Amen? Number two, the cross, the place where our sins were cleansed. And number three, the church, the only body connected to Christ and, cha and charged with the responsibility of proclaiming his cross and his lordship. Amen? So I hope this little simple message reminds you of your declaration of faith, of your confession of faith, that you have to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. You have to accept the salvation of the cross. And you have to now assemble yourself as his body in preparation for what is to come. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And where I go, there, who will be also? No, how about just me alone? Is heaven just for me? So people telling me I don't have to come in fellowship, I don't have to come to church, I can do trip by myself, I can stay in my living room and have trip by myself. Well, when you get to heaven, guess what? I'll be there, surprise. We'll all be together as the body of Christ. Amen? So we need to understand our declaration of faith. Somebody say praise the Lord. Let me wrap it up there because I can go on forever.
Okay, I have a few more things, but I'll maybe pick it up next week with you. Amen? Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead. So you're leaving us because I said you have to assemble yourself in church? I got scared. <laughs> she got scared. We love you. We love you dearly. Go in God's grace. Amen? Come and help her, uh, Elder. You good? We'll try this ready for her, okay? So let's dismiss in prayer and let's, let's sing our, our last song. Amen? I want you to know that you are special in God's eyes. And when you declare his power and his, his anointing in your life, he in turn will do the same for you as well. Somebody say amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the cross? Do you believe in the church? If you do, let's sing our last song together, the blessing song.
week. Not a week. Not a week, week. Amen. Go in God's grace. I love the outfits.